Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Morley and uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming along to Consumers for the Terrified or exploring new ways of involving consumers in the work of Cochrane. Uh, as Chris mentioned, we've got uh, three presenters here as well as Chris. Uh, so um, you can see uh, the pictures of us here. Uh, I'm Richard Morley, as I've mentioned, I'm the Cochrane Consumer Coordinator. And we also have Sally Crow. Uh, Sally, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Um, I've been a member of the Consumer Network for about six years and helped set up the prioritisation methods group with a particular interest in how to involve um, patients and the public and professionals in uh, Cochrane reviews. Thank you, Sally. Um, and also we have Caroline Struthers here. Caroline, would you like to say hello and, and introduce yourself? Okay. Hello. Um, yes, aside from my role on the Cochrane Consumer Executive, which I've, um, I've been on for about a year, I've been Education and Training Manager for the Equator Network for two years. Um, Equator is an international organisation dedicated to improving quality and transparency of health research, pr particularly through promoting the use of reporting guidelines like Consort for randomised trials and PRISMA for systematic reviews. Um, before that, I held self, several positions in Cochrane, including information specialist, managing editor, and training coordinator. And I've been passionate about consumer involvement in Cochrane and research um, since managing a public engagement project for the Cochrane Dementia Group a few years ago. Fantastic. Thank you, Caroline. And you're going to be talking to us about that in a, a little uh, while. So, um, welcome. And as we start, I just wanted to uh, mention some work that was being done by Ian Chalmers and Paul Glasiou, uh, which you perhaps heard about. Um, Chalmers and Glasiou uh, have produced a series of papers about waste in research. And they argue that 85% of health research is wasted, which is quite a shocking statistic. Um, and amongst the reasons for uh, them identifying waste in research, is a failure to involve um, patients, uh, consumers, in the production of, of research. And from a, a variety of perspectives, really, um, the questions that are asked uh, are not important to patients and other stakeholders, but the way that the research is produced uh, isn't relevant and appropriate and doesn't involve patients and consumers in, in, in the production of research. So, um, you know, it's something to bear in mind as we go through this workshop that um, consumer involvement, there are many, many reasons for involving consumers. Uh, and, and one of those is, is to avoid waste in, in, in the work that we do. What we're going to be covering in our hour is we're going to talk about consumer involvement in Cochrane. And I, I shall set the scene uh, about that. <clears throat> and then we're going to hear some examples of innovative uh, consumer involvement. Um, great uh, examples of good practice. Um, we're going to be hearing from Sally about outcomes that are important, important uh, for patients and public and practitioners. And we're going to hear from Caroline about building online consumer communities. And then I shall finish off with uh, uh, just bringing you up to date really with a couple of uh, new initiatives that are going to support this process of, of, of involving consumers in the work that we do. <clears throat> and throughout all of this, what we're going to explore is well, are we terrified of consumers? That's in the title of the, of the workshop. Are we actually terrified of consumers? And what can we do to involve consumers meaningfully? And I think that's a really important word through, through the whole review production process. <clears throat> and throughout all of this, we want it to be as interactive as possible. So there'll be opportunities for questions and discussions and, and, um, and a poll. We also have a, a poll for you. So, um, Chris, I think, can now launch that poll uh, for you all to have a, a, a quick uh, go at, uh, which is a, a question which uh, about how, how how do we feel about consumer involvement in Cochrane? So, Chris, can you can you do that? Yep, that's launched now, Richard. So people are starting to answer it. So just give it a few seconds. Well, while people are doing that, I'll carry on, shall I? And um, and just start to talk about um, the consumer network. Uh, so, for those that don't 
uh, no. Uh, consumers in Cochrane are organised into a into a network, a supportive uh, group of of consumers. There are about uh, 1,500 people who are registered uh, as members of the consumer network, and uh, they elect uh, an uh, an executive group, uh, which I support, and um, and these are the aims of the consumer network. Uh, in front of you um, and basically that is the aims of the network are to support consumers in in uh, in being involved in the production of, uh, of, of research uh, and also to increase the awareness of, of Cochrane evidence uh, amongst consumers worldwide so and, and there you can see a picture at the bottom of the current consumer executive and that was taken in London just uh, uh, last week One of the things that uh, the consumer executive did last year, took up quite a lot of the year, was to undertake a, a thorough review of um, the structure and the function of uh, the consumer network. And that, that's something that both Caroline and Sally were involved in as well. <coughs> and the, the structure and function review comprised an, a number of different parts, really. There was there were surveys. There was a survey of uh, the review groups, uh, uh, who produce the research and a survey of the uh, 1300 members at the time, 1300 members of the Cochrane Consumer Network. We also looked at the information that we have on Cochrane about, about our consumer volunteers. We uh, undertook a, a review of the literature to see what published literature said about consumer involvement in Cochrane. And there was also a survey of external partners, uh, organizations who are key partners in, in the work that we do. I can just tell you a little bit about what we found because I think that's quite helpful in terms of setting the scene. So we had at the time about 1300 people who were registered members, consumers, <clears throat> and from the little chart that's underneath there you can see that most of those uh, members come from the English speaking world and they come from the developed world. So um, the UK, the m largest number of consumers is found in the UK followed by the USA, Australia and Canada. <clears throat> So yes, we, consumer involvement is very much tilted towards the developed and English speaking world. And then also we asked consumers what it is that they do in Cochrane. And uh, you can see that from the chart underneath that the, the three most common things that consumers do are commenting on a protocol, commenting on plans like summaries, and commenting on systematic reviews. So you can see that what most consumers do is comment on what other people produce. And I think that's an interesting, uh, an interesting finding. Really. We talked to the review groups uh, about what their perception was of consumer involvement. And overwhelmingly review groups are, are very keen to, uh, to have consumers involved in their work. They recognize the value of it. And they told us about some examples of good practice that they found throughout the network. But I think another take home message is that that practice is inconsistent. Um, the level of consumer involvement across, uh, across Cochrane is, is very uh, mixed. Some great examples in some places, but, uh, but uh, other, other, other places where there's little consumer involvement to be found at all. <clears throat> but those groups also told us that they would value support. They, wanted, they want to involve consumers more, but they need support to do that. And the things that they identified were things like uh, helping with recruitment and training. The other thing they told us that they need to be, we need to be a, uh, work harder with review groups to understand the difficulties that they have and to try and support them through that process of involving consumers with things like recruitment, training, communication, resources, and just innovation in the ways that they're. Yeah, we talked to consumers as well, as I mentioned, and consumers. Uh, told us lots of interesting uh, interesting information. They give us lots of information. I mean, for a start, consumers are themselves a, 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 an interesting, a mixed group. Uh, people don't identify themselves only as patients or only as carers. People come to Cochrane with complex ways of thinking about themselves. Um, so people are carers and researchers. They're health professionals and patients. Uh, and, and I think that's uh, an interesting way of uh, thinking about, about our consumers. 
what unites them is that they're all motivated by a desire to take part and to, to help create and, and spread the word about the evidence that we produce. Again, they told us that their contributions are largely committed to commenting on the work of researchers <clears throat> and that, they, that there's an unmet demand to do more. So our registered consumers are frustrated on the whole. Uh, there's a quote there, I feel underutilized. And they want to contribute uh, not only uh, in lots of ways, but particularly they want to contribute through the whole research cycle, right from prioritization right to spreading the news uh, about the, res the research that we produce. They also told us that uh, to work harder when it comes to communication. So on the basis of all of that, uh, we've produced a delivery plan, which can be found on the Consumer uh, Network website. Uh, and these are the eight priorities that we've identified. And this is what we're gonna be working towards up to 2020. So the first thing is that we're gonna start a conversation this year about consumer involvement in Cochrane. Everything that I've talked about earlier is about looking backwards, uh, looking at what's happening, but we don't have we don't have a, a mission, really, a mission statement. We don't have a, a vision of what consumer involvement should, should be like. So that's something that we're hoping to develop this year. We want to integrate consumer representation involvement throughout all the decision making uh, groups within Cochrane so that um, consumers are sitting as equals within the organisation. We want to support consumer involvement throughout the entire production process and dissemination process rather than have it concentrated in, in just, uh, I say, just only uh, commenting on others work. Cochrane membership is something that's come and uh, will hold open the possibility of uh, massive change for consumer involvement, of that, I'm convinced. It, uh, people will be able to join and um, be a full part of Cochrane. And we want to make sure that the uh, membership uh, is tuned so such that it offers consumer members uh, significant benefits. For example, that it records all of the activity that uh, Cochrane consumers uh, are, are, are contributing to. We want to build on and develop new programs of support for consumers. And we'll talk about that a little later, uh, about some of the things that we're doing. Communication, I've mentioned several times before. And we want to work with external partner organisations because they are key to helping us um, deliver what, what we're doing. At the moment, we don't have uh, very good relationships with partner organisations, and that's something we'll be working towards. And then at number eight, uh, last but not least, <coughs> and perhaps in some ways, is perhaps the most important thing that we do, that is about increasing the awareness and use of Cochrane evidence amongst consumers worldwide. 